to break a trauma bond? Have you been in a toxic relationship? Are you constantly thinking back about that person, about the relationship that you had, thinking about the good moments, wishing you could go back in time? Let's see how we can break the trauma bond together. But before I start, let me give you a short overview of what a trauma bond is. A trauma bond is a connection that you have formed with a person who has been abusing you. This connection is usually very, very strong due to the imbalances in hormones. What usually happens in a trauma bond, in a toxic relationship, is that the relationship starts out absolutely amazing, usually with narcissists, psychopaths and other different um, people suffering from these type of mental conditions, you have a love bombing stage. Now, this is a stage that is absolutely beautiful. In this stage, the person treats you like a queen or the king. They treat you like the love of their life. Create these grandiose days, these grandiose moments to impress you. They even talk about the awesome future that you will have together. You feel so loved, so appreciated, and that is actually spiking up your dopamine and oxytocin levels like crazy. This is actually spiking up your hormones of love, connection, and excitement for life. And so you feel like you're having the best time ever. You feel like they are your one and only, the person that was meant for you. However, after a while, things start changing like I have just told you. You could even compare the trauma bond to the Stockholm Syndrome. Now, the Stockholm Syndrome is a term coined based after people who are falling in love with their abuser based on people who have been kidnapped and slowly started falling in love with the person who has been treating them badly. Now, research shows that Stockholm Syndrome is not necessarily accurate. Not all victims fall in love with their abuser. However, the concept does certainly apply to the trauma bond. The trauma bond is just like an addiction. It is equal to any other addiction, like gambling addiction, porn addiction, alcohol addiction, drugs addiction, shopping addiction, work addiction, and so on. And so it is equally hard to break it. Don't take the trauma bond lightly. It is not like any other usual relationship where you break up. It has much greater psychological effects. And so it might even take longer to move on. It might even take longer to rid yourself of this addiction, of this connection that you have created with the abuser, with the toxic person in your relationship. And so on a positive note, let's look at how you can break away from the trauma bond. Let's get started. Step number one to breaking the trauma bond. Acknowledge that you actually have a trauma bond and do your best to educate yourself about the type of person that you have been with. In other words, what personality disorder did they have? Were they a narcissist? Were they a psychopath? What were they? This allows you to start accepting the situation you are in and also learn as much as possible about the connection that you have so that you don't repeat it in the future, so that you're fully aware of the signs and symptoms and can identify these types of people immediately. This is crucial because as you go on in your dating life, if you don't heal your trauma bond, you will keep attracting the same type of people. If you don't heal your past, your inner trauma that happened even before, 
you will keep attracting these abusers, you will keep attracting toxic relationships. And so it is essential to become aware of the signs and symptoms of these people so that you can identify them early on and say, aha, I should stay away from this type of person. I still have some healing to do. Maybe I still should keep my distance. Additionally, acknowledging that you have a trauma bond will help you to become more aware and stop checking up on that person. Often when we have a trauma bond, we tend to miss that person regardless of how they treated us, regardless of what they did. And we have this tendency to check up on them. What are they up to? What are they doing? Are they doing well without me? Are they even happy? and so on. Acknowledging that this is your addiction, that this has to do with your hormones, not with the person, not that they're this amazing person that you need in your life, but solely with the chemicals in your body craving the addiction helps you to stay away. And on that note, you should totally stop um, being in contact with that person. If you're able to block them, if you're able to totally distance yourself, if you're not able to try to stay as far away from them as possible, because that will help you on your healing journey. Step number two to breaking the trauma bond, stop making excuses for the abuser and stop idealizing the past. Often in trauma bonds, in toxic relationships, we tend to excuse the behavior of that partner, of that person. However, be completely aware, they know what they're doing. They know that they're manipulating you. They know that they are abusing you. They are completely aware. Studies show that narcissists are completely aware, psychopaths are completely aware. These people know what they are doing and they're doing it on purpose. It is not like you truly matter to them. To them, you are an object, somebody who is giving them their emotional validation. And the moment that you stop giving it to them, the moment that you stop seeing them for this absolutely amazing person, they will devaluate you. They will get rid of you step by step because they don't ever want to be exposed. And so you have to acknowledge that your past never meant anything. The amazing moments that you had meant something for you. They were real for you, but they were not real for them. For them, it was a way to manipulate you, to get you addicted. And I know this is hard because Oftentimes, these moments might have been the best moments of your life. They might have been your ideal of romance. And so you might be looking back and thinking, hmm, that's exactly what I wanted. And especially in toxic relationship, you tend to look back to these memories. This is why people tend to stay in toxic relationships, because even though things are bad, you're thinking, hmm, but there are were some really good moments too. And these moments got you addicted. But you have to acknowledge the situation for what it is was and if it helps you you can tell yourself the person loved me to the extent that they were able to because after all these type of people are not able to love to the extent that healthy people or not as toxic people because nobody is completely perfect right are able to love they're just not capable of feeling that type of emotion or to that type of emotional death and so you can tell yourself that if it helps you to move on. You were loved the most that they could love you. However, it was not real and it will never be the same again. And you need to accept that. You need to acknowledge that and stop making excuses for them. They were completely aware of their actions. Step number three to breaking the trauma bond. Take action and do things that naturally raise your dopamine and oxytocin levels. As I have mentioned, in a trauma bond, your dopamine and oxytocin levels spike up in the early stages of the relationship. 
And so once they drop dramatically, when the person starts abusing you, you start getting addicted and you're addicted to the spike of hormones. And so to help your addiction, to help yourself to get rid of this addiction, you need to start raising your dopamine and oxytocin levels again, because when the person left, you were left at a hormonal low. And so how can you raise your dopamine? You can raise your dopamine by doing the things that you love. Go out dancing, go take a walk in nature, go watch a nice play, treat yourself to a nice dinner, take a nice candlelight bath with nice aroma. Whatever makes you happy, start doing that. Start taking care of your own happiness. Now, how do you raise your oxytocin levels? Oxytocin is the hormone that makes us feel love and connection. So how do you raise this hormone? Well, first of all, by soothing yourself, by showing love and connection to yourself. And I will do a video on that tomorrow. So make sure to check it out when it's out. But also by showing affection to others. You can cuddle with your pet. You can cuddle with your family. You know, show affection to your parents, your siblings, your kids. Automatically, when we show affection, people show affection back. And that makes us feel the love and connection. That makes us feel the oxytocin levels rising. Are you already actively maintaining your dopamine and oxytocin levels? Let me know in the comments below. All right, step number four for breaking the trauma bond. And that is socialize. Oftentimes, when we went through a toxic relationship, when we went through a traumatic experience, we want to close ourselves off. We just want to stay by ourselves, unbothered. We don't want to meet other people, especially because we don't want to feel the pain again. We don't want to be disappointed again. We don't want to be in the same types of situation again. And frankly, we might even be discouraged by humanity. You might be thinking, okay, how do I recognize these types of people, right? And so we tend to isolate ourselves and be alone. However, that keeps you in a cycle of overthinking, of missing that person, of thinking back to the relationship and replaying what has happened. This is certainly not good for you. And so, I advise you to get out there, to socialize, to meet new people, to gain new experiences that you can reflect upon, that you can live from. Now, that doesn't mean that you should automatically go out and start dating new people. You should wait at least a few months until you get yourself out in the dating world again, until you have processed what has happened in your previous relationship and started healing the inner pain. I'm not saying that you have to heal fully because for some people it can take years, it can take decades, depending on the trauma. However, you need to be in a better place psychologically when you are entering a new relationship to make sure that you are not attracting the same type of person into your life. However, socializing doesn't mean dating. Socializing can simply mean meeting new friends meeting new acquaintances, meeting beautiful souls. All right, so let's move on to the final step and that is practice self-love. I cannot stress this step enough. Self-love is the key to healing. It is the key to success. It is the key to inner happiness. And I keep saying that all the time, but it's true. I can tell you self-love will completely transform your life. And so when you start practicing self-love, you actually start having higher standards for yourself. You actually start having higher boundaries. You start providing yourself with the emotions that you were craving after the relationship, but also before the relationship. Because the reason that you might have gotten into this type of toxic relationship 
is because you weren't meeting your inner needs. Well, self-love helps you to meet these needs. Self-love makes you feel significant. It makes you feel loved and connected. It makes you feel like you are growing because you're pushing yourself to be the best version. It makes you contribute because the more you love yourself, the more you want to love others. It makes you do uncomfortable things and take adventures because you trust more in yourself and it definitely provides you with safety. So self-love is the ultimate key. If you want to start learning how to love yourself, then go ahead and check out my self-love videos. I have a whole self-love playlist that you can draw upon right now, that you can learn from right now. All right, thank you for watching. Please let me know what was your favorite step or if you're already implementing any of these steps in the comments below. Like this video, share it with others, and of course, subscribe if you have not already. Can't wait to talk to you tomorrow again. Take care. Bye-bye.